Thutmosis III was one of the greatest pharaohs of ancient Egypt. A skillful military leader and a successful conqueror, Thutmose conducted no less than 17 military campaigns that propelled the new kingdom of Egypt to become the world's greatest power. In 1437 BCE, during one of the Syrian expeditions, the great pharaoh was approached by messengers sent by the king of the Danaeans in order to meet the Egyptian ruler and initiate diplomatic relations. This contact represents the earliest known written evidence of the Mycenaean Greek activity on the international stage. Thutmose III was born in 1481 BCE, an heir to the throne of the famed 18th royal dynasty of the Egyptian kingdom. Following the death of his father, Thutmose II, in 1479 BCE, Thutmose III was only two years of age when he was installed as a pharaoh and technically a co-ruler to his stepmother, Queen Hatshepsut, who initially ruled as a regent and then herself assumed the title of the pharaoh. Upon reaching adulthood, Tutmosi was appointed by Hatshepsut as the commander of the Egyptian armies and remained so until about 1458 BCE, when Hatshepsut passed away, leaving her stepson as the sole ruler of the kingdom. Thutmose's policy was that of expansion and conquest, and during the same year, the warrior pharaoh set out in a military campaign against the coalition of the Canaanite states led by the king of Kadesh and supported by the kingdom of Mitanni. The war culminated in the Battle of Megiddo, where after seven months of siege, the Canaanite forces were finally broken down and decisively defeated. This victory drastically changed the power of Egypt and established dominance over Levant, making Thutmose III the most powerful king of his time. Although most of the traditional Bronze Age powers such as Babylon, Hittites and Assyrians sent their ambassadors and greeting gifts to the pharaoh, a notable exception was the Kingdom of Mitanni, which continued to be Egypt's chief rival in the Near East during the rest of Thutmose's reign. The following decades marked repeated campaigns against the rebellious cities in Canaan and Syria, which were still heavily supported by the Mitanni. These revolts were repeatedly put down by the pharaoh, who had to keep returning to the region in order to reassess his authority. Even the Mitanni themselves were not safe from Thutmose's military intervention. After taking a tour of the subjugated territories in Syria, Tutmose marched through the unconquered lands of Aleppo and Kirkemish, and then moved right across the Euphrates River, catching the king of Mitanni entirely by surprise. The pharaoh proceeded to raid and pillage many of the Mitanni cities and decided to erect a stelae, commemorating his crossing of the famous river right next to the stelae of his grandfather, Tutmose I, until that time the only Egyptian ruler to accomplish such feat. 
In 1437 BCE, another insurgence broke out, and Thutmosis was back once again in what would be his final campaign in Syria. During this campaign, the pharaoh received envoys from a distant land across the Great Sea. Known in the Egyptian records as the King of the Tanayu, meaning the Danaeans, the Mycenaean ruler sent a delegation of his representatives to Syria in order to meet and initiate diplomatic relations with the great pharaoh. This meeting was recorded in the annals of Thutmosis III and represents the earliest known Egyptian reference to the Mycenaean Greeks, preceding the Hittite records by several decades. Danaeans was an old Bronze Age term synonymous with the Achaeans or Argives of the same period and related to what we today know as the Mycenaean Greeks. Furthermore, another, later Egyptian document proves this to be the case, as it locates the mentioned land of the Tanayu together with some of its regions and cities. The inscription of the temple of Amhotep III from the early 14th century BCE places the land of the Tanayu far away across the sea to the north of Egypt, further beyond from the island of Crete. Among the localities belonging to the Tanayu, the listed were the city of Mycenae, the port of Naupleon, the island of Kithara, and the regions of Messene and Thebai. Mycenaean Greece clearly constituated the very edge of the known world to the Egyptians. Even the island of Crete was considered to be far away from Egypt and clearly not a place where pharaohs could exercise their influence the way they did in the Near East. The messengers of the Danaean king therefore met with Tutmosi and brought him the greeting gifts. According to the records, these gifts included a Cretan-style silver jug and three copper cups fitted with iron handles. It is unlikely that the Danaeans could have offered much to the pharaoh politically as their land was located so far away and as such not overly significant to the Egyptians, but it is clear that the deeds of Tutmosis echoed through the known world so much that the news of his greatness reached even kings on the Greek mainland. Also, it was around this time that the Mycenaeans were establishing their power on Crete and subsequently wished to introduce themselves as a significant entity to the great powers beyond the Aegean Sea. The name of the king of the Tanayu is not mentioned, so we don't know who the ruler in question exactly was. After receiving the Greek envoys, Thutmosis took the gifts as a token of respect from the Danaean king and concluded his campaign and returned to Egypt. Eight years later, Thutmosis would conduct his last expedition, this time to the south against the land of Nubia, penetrating to the fourth cataract of the Nile. The great pharaoh would pass away in 1425 BCE, leaving behind an everlasting legacy and his kingdom the world's greatest power. The Danaeans would continue to be mentioned in the Egyptian records, but only sporadically and not directly involved in the events concerning the pharaohs of Egypt. Where they did involve themselves, however, was Western Anatolia, where they would eventually come into long-lasting conflict with another great power of the age, the Hittites. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video, as this is a one-person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico and the State Care for their continued support. This was Wanex TV and we'll see you again soon.